The following opinions are solely those of Botest.com and its test captain. Hi, Captain Steve for Botest.com, and today we'll be conducting a full features inspection and performance evaluation on the all-new yacht and NMMA certified 280 OSX outboard from Chaparral. The team at Chaparral tells us that the 280 is the first production hull in their OSX outboard sports line. With features such as a swivel helm bench, convertible aft and bow sun pads, and spacious head, along with her twin Yamaha 250s, she appeared to not only accommodate, but deliver. So let's get right to it and see how she performed. We tested two versions of the 280, the first with Yamaha 250s, the second with twin Yamaha 200s. The first version with the twin Yamaha 4-stroke F250 XCA engines, turning Saltwater Series 2 stainless steel props with 15 and a quarter diameter by 19 inch pitch. She had a length overall of 27 feet 8 inches, a beam of 9 feet, and a draft of 2 feet 9 inches. With a dry weight of 7,294 pounds, 30% fuel and 2 people, we had a test weight of 8,395 pounds. At 6,000 RPM, our speed topped out at 59.5 miles per hour. Best economic cruise came in at 3,000 RPM and 28 miles per hour. At that speed, the 13.6 gallon per hour fuel burn translated into 2.1 miles per gallon in a range of 222 statute miles all while still holding back a 10% reserve of the boat's 120 gallon total fuel capacity. A slow cruise of 600 RPM produced 4 miles per hour with a 1.3 gallon per hour fuel burn. The second version with twin Yamaha 4-stroke F200 XCA engines turning 18 inch pitch stainless steel reliance props obviously had the same dimensions but with a dry weight of 6,500 pounds, 25% fuel and two people on board she had an estimated test weight of 7,507 pounds. At 6,000 RPM, that boat reached a top speed of 51.5 miles per hour. This time, the best economic cruise came in at 3,500 RPM and 26.5 miles per hour. At that speed, the 12 gallon per hour fuel burn translated into 2.2 miles per gallon and a range of 239 statute miles. Her slow cruise setting of 600 RPM produced 3 miles per hour with a 0.8 gallon per hour fuel burn. She had very little noticeable bow rise getting onto plane. With a 21 degree dead rise, she cut through what little waves we had on our test day with no adverse hull slap. For acceleration with the 250s, we reached 20 miles per hour in 5.5 seconds, 30 in 7.7 seconds. With the 200s, we reached 20 in 6.6 .6 seconds and 30 in 9.7 seconds. The 280's helm sits off to starboard. Mounted to a tilt base, the hand stitched wheel sits front and center. Just forward our twin 7-inch Garmin displays and the Yamaha engine display sits between them. We'd like to see a compass somewhere on the helm. Off to the right is the Optimus 360 joystick providing full maneuverability at the dock. Below are the engine start keys with safety lanyard and Lenco trim tab controls. To the outside is the Optimus 360 joystick monitor which when engaged monitors the boat's thrust and movements. The accessory switches are located above and on the right of the helm while the 280's accessory lighting switches are located to port. To the left of the wheel is a cubby, audio and USB inputs, a 12 volt plug and the Clarion audio controls. The engine control binnacles are located on the starboard side of the helm. Mounted at 30 degrees, we found the controls to be ergonomic. Courtesy lighting was located just abaft. One of the boat's six JL audio speakers is mounted just below the binnacles. There's another speaker in the same location to port and the boat's only subwoofer is integrated into the aft cockpit seating. The helm breakers are located just beneath the console. The helm seating is a conjoined two-seat model. With the bolsters down, it measures 44 inches wide, 21 inches deep, and from the deck to the top of the bolster, 21 inches high. With the bolsters up, there's 21 inches of distance between the bench and the helm. Most notably, the entire bench swivels to starboard, transforming the cockpit. Simply pull and twist the knob to revert back to helm mode. There are stainless steel grab handles mounted on the back side of the seats. The windscreen measured 7 feet 3 inches across and 2 feet 5 inches high. There's 8 inches of visibility from the top of the helm to the windshield top and 2 feet 2 inches of forward visibility from the top of the windshield to the hard top. Located in the bow anchor locker is an electric Lumar windlass, controlled locally or from the helm. There's a manual hand wrench to port and a 6-inch tie-off cleat just forward. Attached to the windlass road is a 14-pound galvanized DTX plow anchor. Two 6-inch pull-up mooring cleats sit to port and starboard. Additionally, the bow can be used as a point of entry and egress with its non-skid decking. 
The boat's mechanical compartment is located beneath the aft center seating section, both struts being attached to heavy duty brackets. Access to the fuel tank, fuel lines, and digital fuel sending units are located beneath the step down into the compartment. Off to port are the house and engine batteries. To the outside is the black water holding tank. A 20 amp battery charger is mounted just above. Both engine fuel water separators are located to either side. The bilge pump is to center along with a low and high level float switch setup. Both engine hydraulic steering pumps are mounted aft. The Optimus 360 joystick steering unit sits in between. The through hull transducer is located beneath the starboard fuel water separator. It's worth noting that the 280OSX is also bonded, which is crucial in terms of preventing galvanic corrosion. LED lighting is located throughout the compartment. A brake on the starboard strut holds the entire section securely in place. To close, simply squeeze the brake and pull the seat down. The bow area was a defining feature aboard the new 280 and it's accessed from the 1 foot 7 inch port side walkway. There was a safe and spacious feel thanks to the 9 inch by 2 and a half inch bolsters which wrap around the inside of the bow area. From deck to bolster top, it's 2 feet 8 inches high. The bow converts to a sun pad with Chaparral's innovative center seat. Retransformation from a sun pad back to conventional seating is just as easy. A dinette table further accommodates, along with speakers and drink holders, both to port and starboard. The head is accessed via the door to the port side of the helm. Headroom is 4 feet 9 inches with seated headroom of 3 feet 3 inches. A sink was set into the countertop. An opening port was to starboard. The electric head slides out on a track and is hid just below the door. The head lighting and flush buttons are mounted on the aft bulkhead. In the cockpit area, there's an L-shaped seating section to port. The star of the aft seating is the convertible sun pad area, which easily converts to an aft facing lounge. Off to port, the bench seating lifts to reveal storage for a 25-quart removable cooler. An inflator deflator for toys or floats is stowed in this compartment, as well as the boat's dinette table. There's no shortage of JL Audio speakers in this area, as we have two to port along with the grab rail and a third to starboard behind the helm seat. Wraparound bolsters continue throughout the cockpit. The hardtop provided a much needed refuge from the sun as our test day was hot and sunny. There was a strong structural design that seemed to follow the contour of the windscreen to port and starboard. The three and a half by two foot skylight is bonded in. And here's a cool feature, a blind system that goes from transparent to opaque with ease. Recessed lighting is located at either end of the hardtop as well. Moving aft, we pass a unique feature for a 28 footer, the dive door. A heavy duty magnet keeps the door securely open. The door handle has a push button lock that engages when closed washdown hose is mounted just about the door. This one platform measures eight and a half feet long by two feet ten inches wide off to port and starboard. The center transition platform measures 11 inches and the entire platform is covered with sea deck. Off to either side are both a six inch pull-up cleat and a six inch aft facing mounted cleat. The boat's fuel fills are just above and to either side of the fixed cleats. The starboard side seating reveals convenient battery and holding tank access. Just below that is a pump out port Clarion audio controls, and water fill. A retractable battery charging cord is mounted to port. A partition door divides the cockpit and swim platform areas, and the 280's main breaker panel is located on the starboard side behind that door and contains the main house and engine battery shutoffs. The all-new 280 OSX from Chaparral is certainly a strong player in the game. With our convertible helm, bow and aft seating areas, roomy head, swim platform and dive door along with hardtop and engine packages, it's easy to turn a few hours into an entire day of safe and fun boating with style and comfort. And that's my full sea trial and features inspection of the new 280 OSX Outboard from Chaparral. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.